Well, hello everyone. Um, my name is Stephanie Schroeder. So there are two Stephanies on the webinar today. We've called ourselves Stephanie Squared. <laughs> but I'm the Publicity Director for Gift Books at Thomas Nelson, a division of HarperCollins Christian Publishing. Um, I'm thrilled to introduce you to our author, Stephanie Fleming, the brilliant mind behind Plan a Happy Life, Define Your Passion, Nurture Your Creativity, and Take Hold of Your Dreams, which went on sale this week in bookstores, but a special edition is going to be in Michael's tomorrow. Thank you all for tuning into this special webinar with us today. It's going to be a real treat for you. Those of you here today most likely already know a little bit about Steph. You know that she is a creative entrepreneur, speaker, optimist, and wellness seeker. You might know her as one of the co-founders of Me and My Big Ideas, a business that began in her garage and is now an industry-leading lifestyle brand. You might also know that Stephanie made the decision to retire, but she's keeping busier than ever with the launch of this book. Steph is married to Kevin, has two grown children and four amazing grandchildren. She's on a mission to create a happy life movement by empowering people everywhere to take control of their own happiness by embracing planning, positivity, and all things creative. We're so happy to have Stephanie here with us online today in such a special capacity exclusively to you and to Michaels. If you feel so moved, please join me in giving Stephanie a warm welcome with a virtual round of applause. <laughs> How are you, I'm Steph? Good. I'm good. I'm good. good. We were here a little earlier. Those of you who kind of uh, popped on a little early, we were having all kinds of conversations about glasses and uh, Starbucks drinks and everything. So I'm so excited to be back <laughs> for the third and final day of this, this chat. So thank you for being here with us. I'm a little sad it's our last one. It's, it's been fun diving into the book content and, you know, seeing all the ways that people are, you know, trying to think about putting happiness in their lives. I know, I know. I'm, this is one thing you guys know that have been on it here and uh, or anything else. I just, I love just chatting. I love conversation. I love just talking about anything and everything. And um, so this has been just the perfect platform and a fun way for us to talk about the book and give you guys an idea of a little bit more about what you can expect um, from Plan a Happy Life. Definitely. So, so just quickly for all of our participants, uh, the way tonight's going to go, we're going to have a little bit of a conversation between me and Steph uh, with some questions about the book content. And then uh, we're going to talk about this, what's different about the special Michaels version of, of the book and um, what you can expect to see in stores. Uh, but also after that, we're going to have a dedicated section where people can ask their own questions. So if you're looking at your Zoom, there's a Q&A section that's different from the chat. So please make sure to submit a question in the Q&A area and we might just flag it for Stephanie to answer. Um, we really wanna make sure that this is a in, you know, collaborative conversation. So if some, something sparks your interest, please make sure to put it there and we'll have a dedicated section for answers. So without further ado, there might be some people who tuned into the first or second webinars, maybe both. So for them, for them, this might be a repeat, but I think it's very important for everyone to know as we begin diving into the book, um, just for us to talk about how this all got started and when did you really focus on an intentional journey with happiness? So I think that um, for me, I have found, I, I could coast for a long time because I'm a pretty optimistic person um, and positive person just naturally. And so I can kind of coast through life being, you know, relatively happy um, and so I didn't really focus on that a lot because it just was something that came natural um, until I got to be um, uh, about 30, by my mid thirties. And I went through a separation and a really, really challenging and difficult uh, uh, divorce. It was, I've shared the story before um, and it was, it was difficult. It was toxic. Um, I, I think it's an important thing for me to state, although I don't usually try and dwell on it, but I think it's important to know that um, this time of, you know, I was in an, a, a relationship that turned abusive and it was extremely toxic. I was depressed. I stayed longer than I should. And I just didn't have, I didn't have any joy. I couldn't find that anymore. And um, I had to make some real changes in my life. And it was that at that time that I started realizing, like, I don't know who I am. I don't know. Um, I don't even know what makes me happy anymore. I don't know what I should be striving for. And I figured for some reason, I just had some clarity and like personal awareness to say, I guess that there's nobody else that's going to figure this out except me. And so I started with very small baby steps to try and figure out 
what made me happy, what I was all about, what I wanted from life. And I just saw this snowball effect when I, when I really had um, intention in my life and started to do the work. You know, I, it didn't happen overnight. It was not easy, but it made a huge difference in my life. And then it, my life turned around the things that started to present themselves in my life, or maybe that I saw now for the first time, um, were incredible. And my life now versus where my life was before is like a 180. It's completely different. So, um, when the opportunity came from, from Harper Collins came to really loved the brand. And, um, I had the opportunity to write this book. Um, you know, I just thought you kind of think of all the things that you might want to include in this book, cause it kind of happened that way that, you know, I felt really strongly about sharing that this book is not my story. This book is not, uh, how you plan your life. There's a few planning tips as, as it goes, or as it pertains to, goal setting and how you will go about intentionally planning a happy life. But this isn't like a planning uh, idea book. You know, it's not like how to, you know, do it before the pen type of a thing and how to decorate. This is really a book that I wrote for you to really like kind of take charge of your own life and define the things that make you happy and how you can go about that and planning that and, you know, kind of chasing that happiness in your life. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, now with everything going on in the world, it's, it seems like happiness might be a little bit out of reach. There just feels like there's a lot of turmoil and, you know, there's tragedy all around us and, you know, global pandemic that no one has ever, you know, gone through before. But, um, you know, of course, years ago when you were writing the book, you could have never imagined that the book would come out in this time. But why do you think that the book coming out this week is an appropriate time to be thinking about happiness? After a lot of thought and consideration, uh, when we found out when, you know, what was happening when the book was scheduled to come out, I truly believe that this is the probably the most appropriate time it could come out. Because in the midst of everything that's going on, um, I feel like this is probably the most important time. This is the time that we need to do this more than ever to say, you know, because it's so challenging and because there's so much unknown, this is the time there's, it's, I mean, it's a perfect time to slow down a little bit and say, you know, priorities shifted now and mm -hmm. things feel differently now. And, um, you know, this is probably, I was just, I mean, it just comes down to like, and I think what, one of the things we're going to talk about today is about the difference between maybe happiness and joy. And, um, which is why I chose this chapter to talk about today, because, you know, I don't, sometimes when things are really, really good, it's easy to say, yes, I'm just in touch with my happiness and I am happy, meaning, you know, smiling and just kind of outwardly happy. But there's something that's deeper, you know, a joy, a contentment, a peace of mind. That's also a part of a happy life. You know, a happy life isn't happy all the time. Um, and so that's why I think like, you know, now when a lot of people are struggling, this is going to be an important time to say, okay, this is how, what do we do now? How do we navigate through these waters? How, what's the, you know, what are our actions and how can we empower ourselves? And I, I'm wearing a necklace that I found a while ago and it just says resilience. And, you know, how do we des develop a resilient attitude um, and behaviors that help us through times like this? Absolutely. Well, diving into the content, as Steph mentioned, today we're going to be talking about um, chapter eight, which is happily inspired. And we're going to be talking about tuning into what brings you joy. Uh, you say in the book that people often have trouble differentiating between happiness and joy, and you sort of touched on it a little bit before, but for the people who are still joining us, I guess, how do you, how do you really define those and differentiate them? So, you know, to me, there's, they're almost the same. And, but I understand, I, I told the story, I think on my podcast a while ago that my husband and I were walking down the beach one day and I, of course, I'm just somebody who just constantly wants to ask you deep questions. <laughs> I'm sure he gets sick of that, every, you know, so often. So, um, but we were walking down the beach and I was just like, so do you think that like, like being happy is an important thing? Do you think it's like a noble pursuit, you know, and a valuable thing for us to go forward for? And he was like, no, not 
really? And I'm, I'm thinking, wait, what? Like, this is my job. This is my passion and my purpose in life. And he's, and so we started talking about it a little deeper and his feeling of what it meant to be happy was like the, you know, skipping down the beach kind of thing. You know, like I'm, it's, things are so great. And to me, happiness was more of a peace of mind and a contentment knowing that I'm in the right place and that, you know, my life might be up and down, might be like a merry-go-round. It might be all over, but at its core, like I'm happy. But a lot of people I think have an issue with that word, happiness. And so I took it a little bit farther and said, you know, think about when, when you tell people like, what brings you joy? Joy seems to evoke a deeper meaning for people and they have a, an easier time understanding it. So for me, if you can think of happiness as something that's, you know, it's a little bit more outward and somebody has a happy emotion, you know, they're happily, they have happy emotions. Um, but maybe joy is something that you feel deeper, right? So it's something that, you know, to your core, you have a joy in you. That doesn't necessarily mean, you know, everything is happy all the time. So I think what I do in the book is try and get you to tap into not necessarily the things that give you the happiness emotion or that positive uh, emotion, but what make you um, joyful and peaceful and content and happy in your core. Absolutely. Well, I love how um, the three webinars really have worked together with each other. The first one was about creating happiness. The second one um, just yesterday was about planning. And today, of course, we're talking about happily inspired chapter eight. And of course, for everybody who's been asking in the chat, all of those previous chats are available on michaels.com slash classes. Um, so it kind of feels like a little bit of a mini book, the, you know, the <laughs> chapters that you selected. So I guess what was the, what was the thought process behind, you know, those three things? I think the first one, you know, when I was kind of going, going okay, three days, three different things, how am I going to do this and how can it kind of sum it up? And the first one we covered in the first webinar was, um, I believe it, I believe we talked about creating happiness, right? Creativity. Yes, yes, because I thought, <laughs> what a better thing to talk about is creativity and a Michael zoom, because, you know, even for me, like it, I'm, I'm really just kind of jonesing to get into the Michael store. Yes. To see the book, uh, end cap tomorrow, but also I haven't walked down the aisles just to like, you know, I don't draw like for a living. I'm not an artist, but when I walk down the art aisle, I might see some colored pens and I'm like, you know, so I really thought that would be an important and fun chapter to start off with um, and an appropriate audience. And then yesterday we talked about uh, planning, duh, obvi. We talked about planning and how, you know, this, this, this crowd, especially, um, how do you, you know, make a plan for once you've defined your happiness, which is also covered in the book. And then today, I really felt like I wanted to choose this one because I think it, we need to address that, you know, times are really difficult. And so knowing that there's a way in here that you can um, address being a little bit more present, which is another chapter in the book, but, you know, being present and having things to look forward to and being proactive when things are not uh, so spectacular on the outside and those, those things that you can't control what are some things that we can do to find our joy again? For sure. And that is the perfect transition to this next question. Um, so you recommend people look at the things that fill your soul with a sense of love, peace, and purpose. And can you share with our participants the things that bring you joy in your life? Yeah, you know, after, after yesterday, when I was kind of like, oh, you know, since retiring, things look a lot different to me now. And um, I had gotten in this rut of getting up and, you know, getting at my computer again and starting to work and doing all of that, which is great. And I love doing that. And I went outside to go check on one of the passions that I love, which is my hydroponic planter. Um, that's just giving me some headaches now with a squirrel, a local squirrel who's eating all of my goods. Um, but I went outside and I sometimes can get in my zone here. And for some, sometimes I live by the beach and sometimes you get, I don't know if it's an onshore flow, but you can smell the ocean from my house. A lot of times you can't, a lot of times it's just, I can see it and I'm so blessed and love living where we live. But I walked outside and I just got this like, like I could smell the ocean air, which is 
I, I mean, I am a Pisces, I'm a water sign, I'm a beach girl. I'm like, I should be by water all the time. And I was like, immediately that smell just brought me back to this, like, that is my happy place with my feet in the sand. Um, my mind, the ocean air is, is the sound of it is calming for me. Um, the smell of it, it just, it's invigorating for me. And I thought, why am I not walking down by the beach? Why am I busying myself, you know, here and going like, oh, you know what I need to do is I need to clean this out. I, I can find myself being very busied with things that I need to do. But I'm like, you know, when I go down to the beach once or twice a week, even just to walk, my soul is filled up. Mm. I calm down a little bit. And so those kind of things that like, even it's so easy to like, it's so easy to not to like let life just kind of happen around you. Mm -hmm. And so I thought about it today after talking with um, everybody yesterday. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to start to like write things down. That is one thing that if I'm finding myself kind of, oh, I don't know, I'm kind of um, anxious or just kind of blah, just say like, okay, kind of get that list out and say, oh my gosh, why don't I just walk down to the beach? See like how, if that will clear my mind or, you know, some people run, some people, you know, people do different things to find that peace and that joy. And, you know, nothing in my life will change when I go to the beach, except my mindset will change and how I handle my life will change. So, um, you know, it's been interesting because I, this whole process, even for me is, you know, it's inspiring for me to have these conversations again, because I think these are kind of like happiness check-ins that we need to do. Um, and so, you know, right now, I, I think even just tapping back into, to, you know, to what makes me happy is making me happy again, if that makes sense. So um, I love the beach. I love my grandkids and um, I'm really kind of, you know, enjoying that part of my life right now. That's awesome. Well, it's, it is amazing that when you're out in nature, it feels like something just happens to you. It, it just, it, there's a sense of peace that sort of washes over you. And my, what I like to do is I like to go kayaking on a river here in Nashville. We're the uh, same person. We're, we're the same. Literally the same person. <laughs> we'll get, we'll, you know, we had like a jar of peanut butter and some water. Yes. And, you know, <laughs> Take it on the lake and start kayaking. <laughs> All the things that we have in common. Um, but it just, it's, I think it just, it helps you. Um, I kind of like to talk to myself when I'm on the kayak. I, I, mm -hmm. no one's around me and you just can enjoy the, the fresh air. And it's amazing how it seems small, but it's, it's, it makes such a difference to get outside. It's, you know, I grew up loving nature, um, would go camping with my dad, my, my, both of my parents, so my parents were divorced, but they both really loved nature. And, um, I was kind of a dreamer, imaginative kind of a kid. And so I loved just being outside. And, um, my dad one time asked me a question because he's a very soulful thinker. He's a very quiet man. Um, but I was like, we were talking about like, when you go out camping and when you just go out into the wilderness and whether you're on a kayak in the middle of a lake and it's just peaceful and you're looking at a mountain and you're like is this what life is about like yeah. wow and so we were kind of just talking about how powerful nature can be and you know I think that I was a lot younger at this time and I had said something like yeah but you know life is so complicated that's more like a getaway you know it's something that it's like a getaway and it's not necessarily reality and so my dad posed this question and he was like do you think life is really that complicated or do you think we make it that way? And I was like, that's a really good question because there are so many things that we surround ourselves with that become kind of white noise. Mm -hmm. Some of it are things that we, you know, we have to do jobs and errands and things that we have to do. But I would probably challenge each and every one of us to take a look at what's surrounding our lives. Um, like I've said before, like I've said, I've been so famous for saying, I don't have time to do that, especially when I was working my day job at, you know, at, at the company and I was busy all the time. And I would say, Oh, I would love to, but I'm so busy. I don't have time to do that. Mm -hmm. And then I'd say like, I'm pretty sure you just watched like five episodes of Ray Donovan. last <laughs> night. Like, you know, I had time to do that in game of Thrones and all of the things that I binge watched. And I'm like, I'm choosing that, you know? And, and yes, it, it got me some time, some downtime from thinking, but you know, we fill our lives a lot of times with a lot of busy things that, you know, like my dad would say, I think some of it is we are overcomplicating things. And 
being out in nature and for me being at the beach and hearing the waves you know hit just the same just that cyclical soothing sound of the ocean waves kind of brings me back to the very basics and it's it's very healing i completely agree um so I want to go off book just for a minute because I, I feel like this relates to another chapter of the book. So this is sort of a bonus bonus question for some of the people, you know, as we're focusing on chapter eight, obviously. But you talk about, you know, the the I when I think about nature and you and and all the stuff we're talking about, it sort of reminds me of your wellness journey. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about um, you know, the 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 being out in nature and the movement and how that sort of contributed to happiness as well? Yeah, I think it's it's um so in 2017, I was, um, I was at the point in my career where, you know, the happy planner was taken off and I was, you know, very fulfilled that way. I loved it, but I was extremely busy. Um, and you know, I actually think there are a lot of people in the world that are busier than I was during that time, but I'm a pretty, I don't know. I'm a, like a, I don't do well with a lot of stuff going on. I'm kind of a deep diver. You know, I like to really like dive into things. And so it was a lot for me. And as much as I loved it, I was, you know, unhealthy in my, my physical body. I was extremely stressed out. I had had some uh, blood tests come back that were like, they're like, you're too stressed out. This is not healthy. Um, I was, I wasn't sleeping well. I was overeating, over drinking, over, you know, everything. And all of these coping mechanisms, I kind of found myself like, you know, I need to, again, it's a, it's a, it's a process and it's something you keep doing. I'm like, I need to make some changes. And so in 2018, I was like, I committed to the entire year tracking my wellness, trying to challenge my thing, myself on not really putting, I, I know what to eat that's healthy. I know I need to move my body. I wasn't really trying to like be um, tracking, tracking, tracking. I was really trying to get a hold of why am I, why do I have these unhealthy behaviors in my life? And so I had a wellness planner um, and in my happy planner and every day, some days it was just like, I would write no, <laughs> or all aboard the struggle bus or, oh, this is great. Or some days I would have like, I remember going into um, a, a, like a fitting room and trying something on and going like for the first time ever and saying like, I feel really good in my body. Like I feel, and I was, you know, I still had, I was not like any model type of person, but I felt proud of myself and strong and beautiful. And so um, that whole process for me was getting out and walking, being out on the trails by my house. Um, and every time I did, I cannot tell you how many times I would be sitting in here at my desk or doing my stuff. And I'd be like, I really should be outside. I don't want to. Uh, I'm not an athlete. I'm not, I just am, I'm a thinker. I'm a creative person. And so, so I spend a lot of time in my head, sitting down, you know, doing things. And so it took a lot for me to do that. And every time I would move, every time I would go outside, every time I, I just, I was re-energized. And so, um, yeah, that whole, the wellness journey for me, which is a whole part in our book um, that, you know, I go over because there were so many dimensions to that for me. Um, it was, yes, taking care of my body. It was also tracking my emotions like I talked about yesterday and really understanding my behavior um, and how my, what, the, what part my emotions played in that in my behaviors. And, um, and then just like, you know, and how do I deal with stress? And I realized how much of an all or nothing person I am, you yeah. know? So it was just, an insight, not only into taking care of myself, but, you know, when people say uh, wellness, what I mean was, you know, I really meant like taking care of my mind, body, and soul. It wasn't, my body part of it was a part, but um, taking care of my mind and slowing down and, you know, spending time meditating, things like that were hugely important for me at that time. Well, thanks for answering that. I apologize. I, I sort of threw that at you and we hadn't planned it, but um, you know, I think it's, it's hard. It's a hard realization when you know that your joy comes from feeling better. You physically, it, like you said, they all work together and, you know, 
as much as I drag my feet, you do feel so much better in every way um, when you do that. So I, maybe I need, a, I need a little bit of inspiration because after this, I was going to go to the gym. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll tell you what, though. I think that, like, what I think people need to understand is that there was a long time that I felt like, I think that, that moving my body and exercising and taking care of myself physically, it's something that does not come easy for me. And I think it's going to be something that I'm never going to have. I, I shouldn't say never. It's very possible that I'm not going to be like all of a sudden, um, oh my God, I am now the, you know, the picture perfect poster child for, you know, 5Ks and I'm going on a marathon or I'm doing all of these things. And so I used to feel a huge amount of shame because I would really try and I would get myself there. And then I would have like, like I did with that whole year and I got so great. And then all of a sudden work got extremely stressful for me again. And in 2019, again, it was really tough. Um, and you know, the squeaky wheel got the oil, got the grease over there. And so I look back, I'm like, Oh, you know, when I was younger, I would have been embarrassed because I had success. And then what happened to it? And what I started to learn was that whether it's, whether it's a taking care of yourself for you, or somebody asked yesterday, how do I stop feeling guilty for, you know, making myself a priority. Um, it's, or people who are trying to stop smoking and then they start again and then they go, Oh, that's so embarrassing. You know, I guess uh, so much shame around that. It's like, dude, like if you are getting back up every time you are learning something every time. And so for me, um, I just like, again, I'm, I'll sit here and, I, and I'm a very open person at this point in my life where I'm going, I am at the heaviest weight I've ever been. Um, I'm not particularly healthy at this moment because of, you know, 2020, hello, um, and 2019 was tough for me again. And I will be right here telling you every time I will just keep going. I am, you know, if I find success in it, great, but I call myself a wellness seeker because I am on a constant mission to be a better version of myself, whether that's physically, whether that's, it, you know, as a, as a wife or as a mom. I am just on a constant journey to be a better version of myself. And I know now I'm going off on a tangent, but you know, I think on social media a lot of times too, and what people will see when it's like, oh, you've got to be, you know, whether you're, you know, I don't know, when you're, when we're figuring things out, nobody has all the answers. And I certainly don't have all the answers. And I've fallen down more times than I would probably care to admit, but I do. And but every single time I get back up, every single time I say I have something to learn from that and I allow myself that process, um, I'm better for it. So I've kind of like kicked that shame to the curb because I also think at that time, I can't tell you how many times that people will then say, my God, I'm raising my hand. That's me too. That is me too. And we're not alone. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, sorry. I go on. Uh, that's a tangent. No, no. <laughs> Um, I tend to really like the phrase that you can't really draw from an empty well. So I feel like this is all, it's all interrelated. Um, so, you know, there might be times where we have to fill ourselves back up to be able to give to other people. Um, and in the book, I enjoyed your advice to share your joy with others when our lives are full of joy and happiness. So what are some ways that we can do that when we want to share um, happiness and joy with others? Well, joy is a funny thing too. And, and I think, happiness and you know have you ever <laughs> so for all moms out there or dads or anybody but I remember like when I was pregnant with my son and I was like I this is I he is amazing and then I had my I had him and I'm like I have so much because I thought how can I love him more than I do when I'm carrying him and uh, then I gave birth to him and it was like oh my gosh my my heart and my life just exploded even more and and then I got pregnant with my daughter and I was like, Ooh, I hope I'm going to love her as much as I love him. Cause I don't think that's possible. Like I love him a lot. And I'm thinking, I'm sure I'm going to, but like, I can't even imagine it. And then I had, you know, had Kayla and it's like, I love her just as much. I have, you know, and you have more and more And my, my grandkids, you know, I have four of them and I just, you know, you have so much love that, um, you know, it's not, it's something that's multiplied. You give that away and it's not depleting from you. It's not, it's actually fills you up even more. So when we have joy, when we have things in our lives and we have abundance, um, you know, sharing that with others in whatever way 
that feels appropriate for you. Um, maybe it's time, maybe it's money, maybe it's service, maybe it's, you know, you're volunteering. There's so many ways that we can give of ourselves. Um, and I think that is sharing the joy because you're sharing a piece of yourself with someone. Um, the one thing I think that I want to make clear, I've heard people that talk about how do you make somebody else in your family or next to you, how do you, you know, make them happy? What can you do? And I, you know, unfortunately, but fortunately I've had a, um, I'm very familiar with how to deal with uh, addiction in families. Um, I've had a lot of that happen in my life. And um, one of the things that I've learned from that that's been like huge has been um, you can't be, you can't really control what other people do. You can take care of you and that feeling, you know, you can't fill, fill somebody, whatever. I'm so bad at things. You can't pour from an empty glass. Yeah. Uh -huh. Done. whatever. <laughs> um, so you can, when you don't have that, like I can be the happiest person ever, but let me tell you when I was in my other marriage and I was trying so hard to change things and to make him want things and to all this stuff, the word that happened was not, I didn't make him all those things. I became codependent and I became the poster child for codependency because I thought everything I had was wrapped up in, in him. And in, you know, if I just do this, then he will do that. You know, if, if I, and it just was like, and it's toxic, you know, you can't, you can't do that. What I can do is I can take care of myself. I can share my joy. I can do things for others, not expecting to change them, but by doing it from my heart, because I'm sharing my heart. If they choose not to take it and they become, you know, you disassociate from that. You do it because you're giving of yourself and it, you know, depending on where they are in their life and in their walk, they may be very receptive to that. You know, somebody who's like just ready and open and willing will be like, this is exactly what I need to thank you for, for this. Other people might be like, yeah, whatever, but you do it because your constants are very good exercise for you to do to just continue to give. With that in mind, I think, you know, we, you're thinking about, you know, the concept of, you know, you have to work on your own happiness and mm -hmm. you can't make another person happy. So I, I really appreciate how much time you've spent talking about the work that you've done to get to this place with your own happiness. Um, and in the book, you know, you, you make sure to say that, you know, this book isn't prescriptive. You're not outlining how, how, you know, how to be happy. It's just the, the, the processes that you can take to get there. Um, so I, I'd love to know when it comes to your readers and the person who's going to be holding this very beautiful book that you hope they scribble in uh, tomorrow, <laughs> um, what is your ultimate hope for them? Or just if, what is your one key wish that you just hope that, that they walk away from the book with? Um, well, so in the other webinars, I've, that I'll, I talked about like the very one thing that I hope anybody holding this book comes away with is being able to say I am worthy I am I'm worthy of love and happiness and acceptance and approval um, but that you actually don't need all of those things to be whole um, and because that's such I mean it's honestly about like three quarters of the journey it's three quarters of it it's one chapter in the book but really everything else if you don't have that everything else that you go out looking for becomes a little empty. You know, you go out there, you get the big job promotion you because you're hoping that your parents are going to say, wow, now she's really something. I am so proud of you. Now, you know, you are worthy mm -hmm. or I'm going to be in that relationship. And oh my gosh, I finally got, you know, engaged. Now I'm going to be happy because people are going to think I'm worthy of love. And I mean something. If you don't believe that you already are, no marriage, no job promotion, nothing is going to fill that for you. You're going to be married and feel empty. You know, you're going to have this job promotion and go, I don't understand why it's why I don't feel accomplished mm. because you haven't done that work first. And I say that I'm like going, trust me, please trust me. I've, I've learned the hard way. Um, and I had all the things, all the things that you would think would make me feel accomplished, accepted, happy, loved, worthy, all of those, but I never believed it for myself. So, you know, I hope that 
you open up the book and do all the work. And if, and if uh, that's the only thing you walk away with, then um, for that time, then I would be happy because that would be, I think it would be such a big difference in the life of anybody, you know, reading that and doing that work. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to raise my hand and admit that I've caught myself thinking, you know, there's no room to be happy right now with, you know, coronavirus and all this stuff is going on. But it's, I think it, it's easy to say that and sort of push away your own responsibility. So Mm -hmm. you're like, well, there are all these external factors. I can't possibly feel happy right now, but it is, it's a tough, it's a little bit of tough love to be like, you have to make your own, you have to make your own happiness. And I appreciate that because it's, it's done in such a kind way in the book. Um, And I just happened to glance over at the comments in the chat and someone asked if they could see it. Um, and someone else had also asked, yeah, did you, do you have your Michael's copy with you? Well, first of all, here's all of my books in the back that I asked for, for, oh, that I have. So I was like, oh, when they came into uh, Mambi, I was like, can I get a couple boxes of those <laughs> so that I can have them back so I can look at them? Um, yeah. But this is the Michael's copy. Sorry, it's backwards, but um, this is the Michael's edition. And what it is, is um, it's you get eight extra pages that include... Um, well, first of all, let me tell you that this book is filled with, um, I'm going to show you one of the things that I've done. So it's filled with for you to like mark up exercises for you to think about throughout the book. Um, I'm doing it right along, right along with you. Um, I hope that you cross things out and underline things and highlight stuff. And the version in the back has an extra set, eight pages and an extra, um, exercise that you know you can do on your own however when you I like having everything all in like one spot you know so it's like a reference for me but it's called there's eight pages of um these radial maps I call them happiness maps because it's what I do when I want to kind of brainstorm and so this would be an example of how you do that to uh, what makes me happy and then here are places for you to write what makes you happy this one is what brings me peace. And so there are several of these in the back of the Michaels edition. Um, what, what are my strengths? And this will really help you kind of along your journey. So um, yeah, it's just such a pretty book. I, I, I've said like too many times, but like the smell of the books, I just love. But so it's filled with like pictures. That was my toe in a bath. <laughs> but I mean, it's filled with pictures and, and co- obviously there's you know, writing in it, but then there's exercises. So I love that it's, it's a great size, um, but it's interactive. So you're learning things, I hope, but then you're also doing some work right in it. Um, and that, to me, the books that I've had in my life that I've treasured um, have not just been books that I've read. They've been books that I've marked up and really had an experience with. And that is my hope um, when you're reading this book. For sure. And I know there are some other products um, that go along with the book at Michael's as well. Yes. So um, uh, we've, uh, let's see, the Happy Planner has been around now for what, five and a half years. And I love all the Happy Planner products, but sometimes like what I want is like, you know, it's like, I'll have a little bit of this, but other people, there's all sorts of different um, styles and things. And so when we decided to do a line of happy planner products that went along with the book, I was like, can I just get what I would want? <laughs> so then I could say like, Hey, this goes along with the book, but, um, I've, so tomorrow when the book comes out at Michael's, there is a 12 month planner. There is a, um, there is a happy planner or happy life journal that has two prompts that you have a little place for gratitude and daily reflection in it. And then I've shared this so many times because I can't stop sharing it, um, is just the very, very, very neutral layout of this planner. It's 12 months. It's 2021, which is going to be amazing, right? Like that's going to be an amazing year. (laughs) Um, And so there's a 12 month planner. There's, um, there's half sheet note paper for you to make that happy list that I was talking about. I'm going to use this one to write down and the top thing will be like, take a walk on the beach. What else can I do is maybe just go sit uh, in my backyard at sunset and maybe, you know, just all the things that will immediately kind of give me a little happiness booster. 
Um, there's obviously two sticker packs, which I love. <laughs> That's definitely my favorite. So that all comes out uh, tomorrow at Michael's as well. And they're great um, companion pieces. They can go, you know, they can be worked just, they don't have to like go hand in hand with the book. The artwork, the feeling, the quotes, the, you know, all of the sentiments and the inspiration come from the book. So you can use them with them, but you can also use them separately. Super. Well, well, I see the Q&A is blowing up. Everybody has oh, been wow. taking our advice to put their questions in the Q&A. So Yay. thank you for answering all those questions, Steph. And I'm going to transition it over to our lovely moderators to throw some other ones your way. Hi, ladies. Well, we have lots of questions again tonight. Steph, I'm going to start with a lot of book club questions. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, any recommendations on what to bring to the book club? Okay. So let me talk about the book club. First of all, if you have the book or you get the book tomorrow, you can start reading it. Um, when you sign up for the book club, the book club is hosted at stephaniefleming.com. It's free. It's self-paced. It's evergreen. Um, but you will sign up there. There's an email to kick off while we're going through it live. So the first, uh, it starts on September 6th and it goes every Sunday through September. Um, and then from there, if you want to do it in November, we won't do that same thing. I'll probably remove the emails and, um, but that, it, that content will live on, on my website so that you can go there and take it. You can revisit it if you want and, um, you know, do as much or as little as you want to. So when you sign up, you'll get a, an email from me right away. It's an automatic email. Once you sign up on the, um, at the website and it'll tell you, here's what you need. You don't need a whole lot. Um, we will have creative challenges every week and I will send out an email on Sunday saying, okay, here's the, some of the things you may want to gear up for. I can tell you, cause I know obviously these are a bunch of planners probably. So you want to know if I know, um, I think a good notebook is great. Um, and some place to write your, just to write down. I want you to write in the book. If you feel like you can, Terry, I know you don't like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you want to write, write in the book, but also there's some exercises where sometimes you just want to like, you know, just journal a little bit more and take it a little deeper. So that would be great. Um, and then we are going, if you want to prepare, we're going to be doing a vision board um, the first week. And so if you want to start gathering those kind of images and think about, there's going to be some directions and helping you walk through that if you haven't done a vision board before. But um, you might want to think about like if you have a magazine with you and instead of throwing it away, you may want to start, you know, pulling some of images um, like that. But other than that, I will walk you through it and send, send you all that. So basically what I have is a place where as this book comes out that I will walk through it with you for the, for the first month. And there's four parts of the book. And I really wanted to be able to have that opportunity besides this great forum right here to be able to say, Hey, let's read part one together. Let's talk about it. Let's go a little bit deeper. I have things called level up questions that, you know, take a little bit of a deeper dive into the content and the exercises that you've done in the book for that section. So I'm really excited to get started, but you can find everything um, that you need to get started over at stephanieplumbing.com. And then I will definitely be following or um, posting a lot more of that on my Instagram account, which is Stephanie underscore Fleming. Great answer. You really answered quite a few of the questions. <laughs> One thing people are still wanting to know is what time on the 6th? Oh man, <laughs> I think I have the uh, email ready to go out at like 12.01 or 12, 12 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, just so that Sunday, whatever time you wake up pretty much um, was the plan was that the email would go out and you could say, okay, let's get started. And you have the whole week um, to kind of do it and, and interact. So I believe that that's what I have planned to do. A lot of questions also about the Michaels edition. Will you mm -hmm using some of that in the book club? And will, is that offered anywhere else? It's not offered anywhere else. It's limited edition in the Michaels um, edition. So once those are sold out and gone, that's where that, that, that limited content leaves us. So um, I probably will, um, I'm not sure if it's, if it's in the book content. Um, I will probably be doing something with it on Instagram. Um, so that those of you who have the Michael's copy and have that content 
can, you know, maybe we can do a little walk through it, but people that maybe didn't have it wouldn't feel, or else maybe we'll do bonus content. I get it, bonus content for the bonus content in the book club. So um, because it's at the end, I haven't completely finished all the content yet. So that might be what I do. That might be what I do. Yeah. And since we're talking about the book, will there be a second one? <laughs> I don't know. I got to catch my breath first. <laughs> um, I will say this. I thoroughly enjoyed the process. I loved that. It was a definite um, growth experience and learning experience for me. Uh, being somebody who was in the manufacturing and consumer products um, industries for, you know, the craft industry and, and creative people everywhere. I, I don't know. I mean, I will never say never. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. But there, I don't, I will tell you this is that I have nothing planned at the moment. Jessica would like to know if the book includes tips for teenagers. Not specifically like for your teenagers, but I think that anything in this book is relatable for teenagers, for children, for couples, for friendships, for, you know, your, as a leader. These are basically, um, you know, it's kind of like, like, let's say, for instance, we're talking about defining happiness. You can take that same concept and make it age appropriate for a young child and say, like, I even think with my grandkids who are, um, you know, like one of my grandsons right now, who is a very active kid, you know, he's seven years old and he's, they're kind of like going crazy being inside. And, and even that I'd want to say, like, I'd sit down with him and say, what's making you really happy right now? Like, because he doesn't have his baseball. He doesn't have his friends all around. He's not going to school, you know, the way he used to go to school. And so it's very easy to focus on that. So you can make any of these exercises age appropriate um, and ask, you know, and for a teenager, what a great thing to learn. I really wish I would have learned this when I was a teenager. So although specifically there's not, you know, this is for teens, this is for kids. I think anything can be applicable to those ages as well. Thank you for that. Yeah. Rebecca asks that you expand on finding your passion as it's been a pain point for many years. That's a good question. So I think a lot of people put their pressure, a pressure, or pressure upon themselves for what is my purpose? What is my passion? Because it feels like such a, um, it's a final and a big thing, right? And so I feel like we walk through it in the book, like ways to help you find what makes you what gives you purpose? What, what is a passion of yours? And one of the things that, um, where I find that is when I get creative and when I get out of my head and I'm a, I'm an overthinker. I saw somebody in the comments earlier say that they were an overthinker and I am too. So when we get out of our heads and we just start, there's a, there's a book and there's a concept. And of course I can't remember his name, um, but it it's called, um, like getting in the flow, the flow. Oh, I'm, I, I butcher these things all the time, but the, con the concept of being in like in your zone, in the flow is something that like, I would say like, if you had a week all to yourself, no kids, no significant others, no job, no responsibilities, what is the first thing that goes, that your mind goes to, to say, oh, I could do this and you could stay up and all of a sudden you'd look and you'd lose track of time. And it doesn't need to mean anything. It doesn't have to, you know, like for me, it's doing something creative. I've gotten, and it changes all the time. Right now, I'm really super into video editing. What for? I don't know. It just floats my boat right now. I really like it. And so I find myself doing that. And then, you know, I think you will, you start to kind of find things that, um, is it being creative? Do you find yourself baking in the kitchen? And you're like, I could just do this forever. I could do this forever. I could um, decorate a home. I could, I just really want to like, I don't know, maybe you do research, maybe you're a reader. And I think sometimes those are things that you tap into and it starts the process of learning what brings you, uh, make, gives you purpose and gives you passion. I also say don't pressure yourself too much to come up with the thing. Cause I had for so long, you know, I was a jack of all trades. I always had to define something as far as like, but so specifically, um, is like, this is what I'm about. Well, you know, it changes and not a lot of people have the, this is my thing. Um, I was able to come to the conclusion for me that my passion is creativity, period. That can mean so many things, but I know that I am my fullest 
self, the best version of myself when I am allowing myself to create things and just, and try and just, you know, be, have that beginner's mind. And so don't put so much pressure on it being like a thing, you know, my purpose is, or, you know, my passion is figure skating or is, I mean, I don't know, but you know, let yourself go with that and just be open. So back to teenagers, if you mm -hmm. go back in time and talk to your 17 year old self, what would you say? Oh, that's a good question. I was terrible to myself. Um, I had, wow, zero self. I don't want to cry. I, uh, I was actually a pretty popular uh, kid in high school and felt anything but, anything but. So I struggled a lot with that where everybody thought you were the queen. I was a cheerleader and, um, and I never felt worthy of that. So I would say, you know, let go of perfection. You, I, all the things that I want people to say from this book is that right now you are worthy. It doesn't matter. You know, I compared myself to everybody in school. I wasn't as smart as her. I wasn't as skinny as her. I didn't have as nice of a car as her. Um, I, I wish I knew that at that moment, right where I was, was that I was perfectly where I should be, you know, and that I was worthy of everything. And if, if I, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine if I was 17 years old and truly believed that. That's what I would tell her. I would tell her to read that book and believe that. Thank you for that. Nolia asks whether you read other happiness books during your happiness journey. Oh, I'm looking at them all right now. They're all yellow, by the way, just so you, because yellow must be a happy color. I, um, I have, my favorite book is called Happier by Tal Ben-Shahar. It's, um, he was, he's the teacher that I'm taking. I, I shared yesterday that I am now taking a, um, a course, a year long course to become a certified happiness um, instructor. I don't know exactly what that means, but it's, it's a, an academic course. So um, really learning about the science of happiness and positive psychology and history. And he is, uh, he's a, the professor that taught the most popular class at Harvard, which was about happiness. And he's just got such a great writing style. And, um, and you know, really, it was funny because I consider myself someone who has a lot of intuition and experience in life. But like I, I've shared that I didn't go to college. I was pregnant right out of high school. And um, and, but I, I know that I'm a very smart person. And so all of my experiences and what I wrote about in the book of plan a happy life. So interesting. After I had read, I had, I had written the book already, um, and read this book by Tal Ben-Shahar. Hold on. Sorry for the armpit shot, but, oh, I took the book jacket cover off, but it's, it's just a, it's a really great book. But what I had realized is that basically his, his scientific academic findings were the same things that I had found out in my life trial and error. Um, and he's got some great stories in here. And so it just opened my eyes to the science of happiness and, um, and studies and research. And um, I'm just fascinated by it. So I've read that. Um, I have read Hardwiring Happiness by Rick Hansen, which is a, another really great book. Um, and then I will tell you, that some books that have changed my life are The Gifts of Imperfection um, by Brene Brown. I highly recommend that one. Um, not solely on happiness, but definitely about worthiness um, and wholehearted living. And then the other book that I just love is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Talk about creativity. And so those are, those are just amazing. I am a, an avid um, learner. I like to learn all the time. So, um, yeah, so I'm taking this course and you never know. <laughs> you never, I don't know why I'm taking it. I just want to. <laughs> so Tosh would like to know how you handle hiccups. Life throws things at us when we're least expecting them. Do you have any suggestions on how to pick yourself up? Yeah, I mean, I think, I will be really honest. I don't handle them well to begin with. Um, I like routine. I like, um, I like things kind of the same. And in the past, I've been very, very thrown by, by curveballs. And it takes me a while to kind of adjust. And um, the reason I wear this resilient um, resilience necklace is to remind me that every time 
I learned to kind of swerve uh, from the curveballs of life that I'm becoming more resilient and I have been because, um, and I, I look at him as, I don't look at it as an opportunity because not everything that you, that you get sometimes are very painful and you don't want them in your life and you'd never choose it again. But um, I think the first thing, you know, that I would probably do is just pause um, and, and really examine how you're feeling. I think emotions are so powerful when we can understand. And so when, when something happens and you get, you get that curveball, um, you know, if you can identify, I'm really scared because of this, or I'm really hurt. Um, and you can, you know, there's a, probably a lot of different emotions that you can have. I think it helps us, you know, um, process this. And then the next step that I always take that I've learned, not that I always take now, just I've learned probably in the last 10 years is um, learning to accept the things that I can control or that I can't control um, and really focusing on the stuff that I can because I spent a lot of time worrying about, you know, like think about right now, there's stuff that's happening in our world that no matter what you do, you can't control. You, you can't, you won't be able to predict it. You are going to have to roll with the punches. And then there are some things that you can, you know, you can get out and vote, you can, you can use your voice for things, you can make different changes in your life. Um, there are things in today's situation that you can control, and then there are things that you aren't. And if you spend so much time just obsessing over the things you can't control, you fill your life with worry, and it's very hard to bounce up and back and be resilient and, um, you know, and get back up. So I think pausing to understand what your emotions and what you're feeling and then figuring out what is within your control to make you bounce back, get back up, feel better. Um, that process of self-reflection is uh, very important. Well said, very well said. Jessica is wondering that while you were writing the book, were there ever moments where you just wanted to stop? No, but what I did learn about myself is that I'm really bad with long deadlines because I am a perfectionist. And so I will change my mind and think that, oh, maybe we should be like this. Me, oh, no, 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 maybe we should do this. And I have so many, um, my brain goes off in so many different directions that it's, that overwhelmed me. It didn't make me want to stop but it definitely overwhelmed me because um, when I have small little things where I'm forced to make a decision, it's much better for me. And the process of, of you know, writing a book, it, there's, it's, well, where do we start? What's the outline of it? What do you cover? How do you, you know, you want the, there's so many different avenues you could go down. That was very overwhelming for me. Um, but I learned, um, I definitely learned in that moment, like, okay, I've, wow, I really either need to break these things down um, for me, but no, I just, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think too, because it was a challenge for me, you know, it was something different. Well, we're glad you didn't give up. <laughs> me too. Hazel would, Hazel would like to know if you think that your book would be a good gift for a family member or for someone who recently lost a daughter or a sister. I do. I think that would, I mean, I think it's a great book. And I think that um, when you, when you look at what's inside, I think my message in there is, um, I don't think it's a, you need to be happy. Oh, you're going to have, because obviously that, you know, that family member, that friend is, is hurting. And so the last thing I would ever want this to be was, Hey, you're hurting. Here's how you need to be happy, you know, because they might not be happy for a while. Um, and that's okay. They need to experience grief and sadness. And, and what I think this book does is gives you that space and allows you to a time to process that. And obviously they don't need that permission, but um, it's not pressure to live a perfectly happy life. Um, maybe this could be a great tool. It's like, Hey, when you're ready to dive in to, you know, to this, this is a good, this is a good book. Um, so I think that, I think it's a great a great gift. And, and I do think that, you know, giving that book and saying like, Hey, you need to be happy. No, but I think, um, like, Hey, this would might be a really good resource when you, you know, feel ready to, to dive into, you know, moving forward a little bit kind of thing. Thank you for that. Um, so Steph, Catherine wants to know if you have a craft room 
And if you do, what does it look like? This is it. Um, I, it's in, it's behind um, my kitchen. And so like garage, kitchen, it's just this skinny. I'm sitting at a desk. It's a stand up uh, desk. And then, so this is in our house would have been like <laughs> a second kitchen, which is ridiculous because I barely use the first kitchen. So I was like, and it also had another area for a second washer and dryer. I'm like, no. So we just made it into a craft room, but it's kind of weird because it has the sink. Um, and you know, so, you know, I don't, I mean, it's great. And it's a space that I have. I've got my printers. I kind of for the longest time has worked as a, um, work at home, you know, to be honest, like I've got my computer screens here and stuff. I probably will have to get back into a little more um, just really exploring myself creatively because to be honest a lot of those things that I did were um, creative but they were work endeavors so this will probably well let's be honest I cleaned this up so you guys didn't see a huge mess um, but it'll be it'll be messier and more creative I'm sure in the next few months. Courtney is currently recovering from the unexpected loss of her fiance and she wondering what areas of your book do you think will be the most impactful? You know, I think you've got to give yourself permission. I'm so sorry. It's, you know, that's something that I think is, it's a grief, right? You have to process that. And I think that, you know, you, you can open up this book and I feel like there might be different. I think the part about just learning to love yourself, maybe what you need to do is just be able to give yourself that grace right now where you are. Um, I can only imagine, I, I haven't been in your position, so I wouldn't want to assume, um, you know, what you're going through or, or even like how you should work through it. But, you know, I would suggest if you re flip through it and see what resonates with you at this time. And if nothing does, like, just be with that emotion, you know, I think processing those things for you, um, and allowing yourself the time that you need to do that are more important than diving into the book. But I feel like if you can, you know, if you can open it up, maybe what you do is just, you know, open that up and, and find out, okay, what's making me happy right now. Maybe just identifying what does make you happy in this really difficult, you know, sad time for you. Um, and maybe if it's, you can find one piece of your life where you're like, you know what, this still brings me some joy right now. Maybe that's going to give you some clarity at this time and how to, you know, how to just make it that next day, how to, how to get through each and every day um, until you find, you know, maybe that you find a little bit more room in your life for that. So um, again, I'm so sorry for your loss and I just love yourself through the process of, of grieving and, and all the emotions that come with that. Steph, do you have any suggestions on how you um, can promote happiness when dealing with mental health issues such as depression? You know, I've, I've dealt with depression um, and I have had, you know, family members dealing and friends dealing with anxiety. And, you know, the first thing I, I think is to definitely, it's really nice to, you know, that the stigma now is starting to fall and you can talk about it and say, you know, I'm dealing with depression or it's postpartum depression or anxiety or any other kind of mental illness um, or mental um, thing that you're dealing with. I feel like number one, you know, I needed to get help. And there was no shame in that for me. And because I can tell you, you know, I'm not a doctor and there are so many things that, you know, do need, are helped with medication. So I, I mean, I think number one is find out if that's where you need to be taking care of that. Um, I always say, listen, you know, not knowing what someone's going through when you know that there's someone that you can uh, talk to, it's really, really helpful. Um, Again, I think try not to fix them, um, but be there to listen, offer resources and help. Do you need me to, you know, do you want me to go somewhere with you? Do you want to talk about it? And, um, you know, because a lot of those things too, a lot of really, really heavy things in life, you know, the bug, um, <laughs> a little, a lot of those heavy things in life, you know, you're not going to go to the, you know, hey, let's, let's plan or let's like make a vision board. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to know that like, Yes, there's, there's times in your life for a vision board, which are great, but a vision board is not going to get you through um, losing a fiance or dealing with clinical depression. So I think we need to make those distinctions and also make sure that we get the help 
or, you know, help people get the help that they need for some of those more serious um, situations. So Sarah wants to know, as a wellness seeker, what is your favorite motivational phrase or self-talk? Ooh. Um, you know, I don't know a phrase right now. Nothing's popping up. Uh, but I will say this is that my favorite thing to do and the most effective thing that I've seen to do is to talk kindly to myself. I have, you know, I, I say, I, I mentioned this on our podcast that, uh, I used to stand in front of the mirror when I was getting changed and I would just be like, Oh my God, I don't want to see myself in the mirror. You know, you just were like, Oh God, I don't want to see it because I was the things that I was thinking about myself were so unkind. Um, and I just saw every flaw, every flaw. And I went and, you know, kind of pointed it out in my head. And so now I had to get to that place where I would stand in front of the mirror and give myself a compliment, tell myself something nice. You know what? I like your smile. I think I really like my smile or I, and then I would get even, you know, just that positive self talk, um, and being encouraging to yourself. Um, you know, that was something, because that's something I struggle with, but, um, you know, I think being kind to yourself, whether it's up here, whether it's something you're thinking or it's something that you're saying, like, don't, I don't know. I was, now I'm going to get on my soapbox, but like, don't be somebody who just talks about, you know, oh yeah, you know, self like disparaging and, and being the butt of, of the jokes you you're being in the butt of your own jokes and, you know, learn to develop a self love and by talking kindly to yourself and really developing, um, you know, a kind rapport, one that you would have with your children, with your friends. So I, I'm sure there's a quote, but I am, like I said, I can never remember them. So I just butcher them. So I'm going to ask one more question, but I do want to let you know that we have so many more questions that we haven't gotten to answer. So, so apologize to everyone for that. But um, Melina is asking if you will be attending any planner events going forward because she really enjoys seeing you there. Oh, thank you. I, I don't know what my plans are um, because especially, I think right now, you know, it's hard to even know what's happening next year. And um, I do know Go Wild is scheduled, I believe, for June. And Jeanette is a good friend of mine and such a wonderful supporter of the Happy Planner and the planner community at large. Um, and I have told her that I would love to have, you know, somehow be at Go Wild. She's asked me if I would, if I would come because um, I was scheduled to speak this year and then COVID and then I retired. So um, in some capacity, I hope to be at Go Wild and I, I don't really know about any of the rest of them. So I, I've even thought about like even just going as an attendee and going and just like chilling out and hanging out with everybody, you know. Thanks so much for an answering everyone's questions, Steph, and I'm going to send it back to Stephanie Schroeder. Well, we actually, I, you know, I sort of closed, um, I sort of closed out the other night um, and, you know, sort of mentioned where the book was available and for everybody to get excited about, you know, the Michaels release on Friday. But I thought since this is our last webinar, I thought, you know, Stephanie could share some parting thoughts with all of us as we're all, um, you know, wrapped in attention and, you know, taking all of her advice. And um, I've been jotting down all the book book notes. So Steph, <laughs> you, you just have been such a joy. And uh, I thought you would be the perfect person to end tonight's session. Thank you. Um, so yeah, thank you guys all so much for being here. And if you've joined me um, and us for the last three days, thanks for just hanging out with us. I, I'm sorry if we didn't get to your questions. Um, I, I honestly would sit here all night long, no joke, and talk to all of you. Um, and really anybody that knows me knows that that's true. <laughs> and I would enjoy every minute of it. But, um, but so I thank you for being here and being part of this thoughtful conversation. And um, I am really excited for tomorrow. Tomorrow is the set date for the Michaels product. So the Michaels limited edition book will be there setting tomorrow, August 28th. And so will the coordinating book product that will be in all Michael's stores. It will be at Michael's Canada and Michael's.com. So if there's somebody was saying earlier, there's not a Michael's right near me, um, which is, you know, you have all different sorts of options. If there's a Michael's near you, go check that out. Go say thank you to your Michael's store associates and, um, or you can go to Michael's.com. So um, tomorrow will be that date. I will be out there looking at the Michael's stores and finding, uh, hopefully mindset 
uh, near me. So that is where you can find that. Again, if you want to join the book club, you can go to stephaniefleming.com and sign up there. And then, um, or you, and I'm sure if you kind of miss that and you don't know exactly where to go, you can always follow me on Instagram at Stephanie underscore Fleming. And for all the Happy Planner goodies, you can go to thehappyplanner.com. And um, yeah, so that's all the places you can go find us. We're all over. So uh, again, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night or day or morning or whenever it is. And thanks again for joining us. Bye.